In this laundromat, I'm going to show me finishing the bearing job on a horizon. I'm going to show how to finish that. I'm going to show what else to look for to change while you're doing a bearing job. I'm going to talk about what do I do when I go on vacation? What happens to my laundromats? Do I go on vacation? Could I go on vacation? Because no one ever talks about that with a laundromat. They don't talk about what do you do when you go on vacation? Because I got to go on vacation. I am like the Florida freak. I, I, the beach all the time. Hear that? That's the sound of money. You wanna know what sound of money is? That's it. Ching, 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 ching. Ching, 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 ching. Now you're gonna to wanna to get this thing on a hard surface. Like the reason I'm using the floor is because it can't move around. If this moves around and you screw this up or screw up the race, well, game over. I like to find a socket. It's as big as the outside of the bearing. You do not want to hit like this part here. This is this can be damaged. If you damage this, that's not good. Now I could go around in this pattern tapping, or I could put a piece of flat stock steel over it too. But you just don't want to hit directly on that bearing, just in case you miss. Almost there. There we go. Now we have just a little bit to go and this is going to be a little bit of a trick. A flat bladed chisel or something that you can get on that outside edge without Don't want to get crazy because you can tear this up and then you got to start all over and that's what it looks like hopefully that zoomed in so now you just flip it over and you do the same thing for your big bearing now make sure you spray this too with a little oil I didn't show that a minute ago but I had wiped it down now that sounds weird, but it'll actually help it slide in more. Get it started again. Now we got to find a socket. Now, if, if you don't have a big socket like me, what you can do is take it to a shop and have it pressed. See that sound, that change in sound? That was it bottomed out. You don't want to sit there and waylay on this thing like you're going to town. Now we're going to grease this. We're going to give this a little oil too. Because this is going to help it just slide right on. Now it's okay if we tap on this, but we gotta be careful. If we, we get crazy with this one, we'll break it too. Hey, real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, a viewer, Simon. Simon is over in Ireland and he's been viewing these videos for quite some time now. He's been around since I was I think like at 10 viewers. Simon just had an appendix surgery so I just want to give him a shout out and I hope you're feeling well. I hope everything's going good for you. Simple it can be. 
Get this up here where you can see it. This is what it looks like. The new seal on. Just make sure it's wiped down. Now I will, when I go to assemble this on the machine, that bearing in there and the one back here, I'll put a little bit of oil or like lithium grease or something. So when I slide it back together, it goes together real easy. But there's one done. I got another one to do and then I can slap them back on the machine. Now to put these back on that machine, it's just reverse order that video. You mount this thing up and there's only one trick to it that I'm going to explain. And that is this. You see this right here? And I need to clean that off. That's a weep hole. Now what the weep hole does is if water gets through the seal, you know, you got a bearing up here and you got a bearing down here. There's actually a cavity in here that you don't have nothing. It's kind of hollow. It's an opening. What happens is water gets in there and if the bearing is getting intruded, that's what this oil is here. This is actually the grease from the bearing. As it spun, it slowly worked its way out this hole. And that's what the hole is. It's actually a, <clears throat> a weep hole uh, so that you could tell your bearings are going out. <clears throat> it's a weep hole to tell that your bearings are going out. Hard mounts and soft mounts have this in the horizon line and hipsch line. I'm going to clean it off. Because basically there's a peak hole, there's a service hole in the back of these washers, and you can look and see this. So why this is important is, when you install this one, you want to make sure, if you remember right, there was a bolt on the bottom, this is how it's going to go. You want the weep hole always to be on the bottom, when it's a hard mount and when it's a soft mount. Because you want to be able to look at this later and say, oh, there's no oil, the bearings are still good. It's not making any noise because it'll start leaking here. You'll see water come out of here even when it's running, and that's a good place to check. Now, a lot of your hard mounts have a cover on the back, and you can get to them real easy. Hopefully, you've got it set up well, and you can take this off and look at them. Horizons is a little bit more of a trick because a lot of people put them in tighter spots. So food, food for thought, but that's what you're going to have to keep an eye out for is this hole getting weak. All right, so now that you got the bearings put in, you got the housing all done, all you got to do now is install in reverse order. Remember, if your housing has that weep hole, make sure that's on the bottom so it's faced like this. So it goes like that. And pretty much you just put it back in reverse order. I mean, it's really that simple. I would, if this has oil on it, I would hit it with some WD-40, clean it off, and then hit it with WD-40 again, give it a light coating so that your bearings and your seals slide over it nice and easy. You won't have to worry about it too much, it should just go right on. Other than that, like I said, that's pretty much it for the bearing. Um, the second part of the question was, is what else would you change while you're working on this? These down here, I'm gonna show you these. These are the shocks, I would change the shock. See that dirt, looks like dirt? That's actually, that's actually oil coming out of the shock. That's when you know they're bad when they look like that. And see this back one? That one looks just as bad. We're gonna roll around to the front here. See that one? Even, that one's even worse there. That one's really bad too, but this, this one right here is the worst. And that the third thing. Like I said, once you do the bearing, check the shocks, because I guarantee you they're bad. You wanna look at the belt. The belts will not wear out like a car belt where they fray in that, they just break in half. So you wanna kinda of look to make sure where they're seamed at. And yeah, you can't see this one, so it's still good. But honestly, for what a belt costs, I would change the belt if you plan on keeping this washer a long time because this belt will last as long as the bearing job. So I've had very few belts ever break on me, but if you are already got it open, you might as well do that. So those are the three things. Like I said, once you do the bearing, you should definitely do the shocks and check the belt. Everything else you can service from above the machine or from the front while it's installed. You don't need to uninstall it. The water valve, which was on the back plate, you can basically do that from when the machine's installed. You don't need to take it out. 
The computer's real simple. There's not a whole lot of parts. The door seal comes off from the front, the door lock from the front, your soap tray goes in from the top. But these are the things I would look at. So I hope that helps. I can't wait to hear how your progress goes. I'm putting it back together and taking it apart. Um, super simple. I would not be scared of this at all. The biggest thing for you is going to be just pressing your bearings in. Make sure you do a good job at that. Um, take your time. Uh, like I said, get the good bearings and get the seal. You got it made. So good luck. You get the question, like I said before, about how do I change out a laundromat if I go on vacation for a weekend or a week? And that's pretty simple. There's three ways to change out your laundromat when you're gone. One is you don't. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, that makes no sense. If you have a certain demographic, and I'll give you the example, one of my laundromats can go a week and a half without me touching the change machine as long as it's fully loaded. It has two bill validators. This is as long as you keep it clean. If I'm gonna go on vacation for a week or a weekend, I always clean my bill validators. I wipe them all down like two or three days ahead of time. I make sure there's no issues. That's really the most major problem you're going to have with a bill validator is it gets dirty and you don't pay attention and the bill gets stuck. They get stuck because those bands in there, those actual rubber, rubber bands or uh, belts you want to call them, they call them belts, they get dirty and they can't pull the money in. So if you clean those, you won't have a problem. So that laundromat can go a week, week and a half with no problems. Now my other two laundromats can only go about a week. A week is really stretching it, but if you really load them with quarters, you'll be okay. If your coin boxes in your machine are deep, like the new deep style, you don't have to change them out because they won't get jammed up. The second way I go about this, <clears throat> I don't clean my laundromats on the weekends. On the weekends, I have a person I hire. You can hire anybody, anybody you trust. Now what you can do is you can give that person a little more responsibility when you're gone. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, well, they could just take the money and say it didn't make any money or take 50 bucks off the top or 100 off the top. <clears throat> How would I know the difference? Well, if you've just started building your laundromat and you buy all new Speed Queen or Lions products, the new stuff, like Hitch has the, what they call the Galaxy Series 500 or 600. If you buy the high-end stuff, it keeps track of how much it made every day of the week and it generates spreadsheets for you. If you don't like keeping track of the money and counting it like me, network your machines. If you plan on owning them a long time, pay the extra money, get networked machines. I have two-thirds of my machines are network capable. My horizons are all networked. I know how much my horizons make. My dryers are all networked. I know how much they make. I don't have to count them. That saves you a lot of time. You can literally just go into a computer program and go, how much did I make on Monday? You can see time of the day even. Now with them being networked, you can change your vend prices from the beach. You can change your vend prices for time of day pricing. So at different times of the day when you want to generate more revenue and no one's there, you can change your prices. That's the beauty of networked machines. And the beauty of it too is your helpers never rob you. You will always know how much money was there. And another thing, when you have that financial statement, you can take that to your bank and show them what your laundromat's making or show it to your financing company that you're buying new stuff from or trying to start another laundromat. That is a very big thing in the industry is proving how much you make to the next buyer, to your banker, to your finance company, whatever you're doing. So in my advice is, if you are planning on being gone a lot, get equipment that's networked. The third option is to hire a family member. And I've done this before. I have family members and friends, both of those two would fit this category, that you trust, have them change it out. I've done it, I've never had any issues, I've paid them good, I, that's just the way I've done it. So those are the options you have. Now the final option, there actually is a fourth option, and I don't, I don't mention it, but it's not going to be in everybody's area. But when I started my laundromats, my equipment dealer told me from day one, they said, if you ever want to go on vacation and you don't have anybody to service your laundromat, we will check on it for you. Yeah, they're going to charge you primo to do that. So I'm just forewarning you, your dealer might offer that option, but you might as well just 
shut the thing down because by the time they get done charging you, you ain't gonna make any money anyway, trust me. And they're gonna know how much you make. And you might say, well, why is that a big deal? Well, your equipment dealer, once they sell you equipment, is out of business, okay? Unless you need parts, they're out of business. So what are they gonna do? Once they know how much you make, they're gonna walk down the street and find somebody else and be like, hey, in this town, he's making $100,000 a year. You wanna make 50? Because if we put this laundromat in with this equipment package, you'll make $50,000 a year and somebody will jump on that. Now they just took your pie and cut it in half. Be very guarded when you tell people how much you make. Nobody does it for a reason. Laundromats are pretty guarded for a reason. And the reason is they don't want you knowing what they're making because they don't want to have to compete against you. Especially if they're a rundown laundromat, they really don't want competition because now they got a choice. Go completely out of business or spend money they don't have to try to compete against you. And usually that's a lose-lose situation. So those are the three ways I'd go about it. I hope that answers some of your questions. If you have any more, just hit them down in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer questions on laundromats or rental property or farm ground. Or Hope you liked the video. If you liked the video and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just hit the thumbs up button. The thumbs up button helps a lot to us little channels. I know it seems like I ask for it a lot, but it's one of those weird things on YouTube. It sure helps a lot. So I appreciate it. And thanks. And thanks for watching. And I hope you got something out of it. I hope you were entertained. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're healthy. Till next time, see you later.